Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Amma ba'da habita fillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Continuing on in our study of Bulugh Maram, we reach the end of the book, the last kitab of the book, which is Kitab al jami So this is the comprehensive book. And in this book, which is a book of immense importance, we will study things such as manners and things related to uh, how we relate to one another and edit and etiquettes and all of those things which have to do with how the believer actualizes the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in their relationship with other people. And the Prophet Alaihi Salatu Wasallam had the best of manners Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and when Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha was asked about the way of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his manners, she said, khuluquhu al-Qur'an. You know, that his manners was the Qur'an. So if you read the Qur'an, you would understand the manners of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that means understanding the Book of Allah. That means reading and contemplating, understanding and implementing. And that was the madhab of the Salaf. That's how the earliest generations from the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een to the tabi'een with tabi'a tabi'een how they all uh, practiced and understood Islam is that they took from the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they tried to implement it. They tried to practice it. They tried to be the best believers that they could be. And that was illustrated all throughout our studies in the various chapters in Bulugh Maram, in which we saw how the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in, were hirs al al -ilm. How many times did we say one of the benefits of this hadith is that the Sahaba, it shows that the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in, were vigilant in studying or vigilant in acquiring ilm al nafia beneficial knowledge. And that beneficial knowledge they wanted to acquire was for the uh, sake of pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and practicing in order to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in order to actualize Islam and to attain Jannah. And as the Salaf used to say, a statement of the Salaf al Salih, Rahimahumullah Jami'in, that they used to say that. Al-amal thamarat al-ilm That deeds are the fruits of knowledge. And with that being the case, in order to gain maximum benefit and gain reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we have to have good deeds. And in order for our good deeds to be accepted, they have to be built upon two conditions. That first, ikhlas lillah, sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning that your worship is only to Allah azza wa jal. And secondly, that it's in accordance with the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. So ikhlas wa mutabah, ikhlas, sincerity to Allah, and following the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And from the excellent way and from the excellent deeds that one can have is in the bab or the chapter of akhlaq in, in manners. And the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam said in an authentic hadith, مَا مِنْ شَيْءٍ أَثْكُلُ فِي مِيزَانُ مُؤْمِنْ يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ مِنْ حُسْنُ خُلْقِ 
وإن الله يبغض الفهش البدي. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "There isn't a thing that which that weighs heavier on the scale of a believer than good manners, and verily Allah hates wicked and sinful speech." So the Habitifillah that shows us the importance of this bab, of this chapter that we're about to, uh, about to study. And since the Prophet ﷺ says there isn't a thing which weighs heavier on the scale of a mu'min. That means one of the greatest deeds that you can do that is comprehensive is have good manners, is be good in the way you treat people, being respectful, learning the adab, the manners of seeking knowledge, learning the adab of dealing with your parents, learning the adab and the manners of how to ask questions, even to the scholars, learning the adab of how to seek knowledge, of how to sit in the majalis of dhikr, learning the manners of how to give da'wah in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, learning the manners and the adab of how to eat, learning the manners and edit of how to have a righteous Islamic household, learning the manners and edit of relations between a, a husband and wife, learning the manners and edit of the relation between the father and his family, or the children and their father or their mother, you know, bitter walidain. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, emphasize these important, uh, these important acts of ibadah that fall under uh, adab and manners and etiquettes. And when he said, Subhanahu wa ta'ala fi kitab al karim, wa qada rabbuka ala ta'budu illa iyahu wa bil walidaini ihsana. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, fi kitab al karim, and your Lord has ordained for you uh, or, or your Lord has commanded you to not worship anyone except him no partners and to your your parents or two parents give ihsan righteousness obedience servitude to your parents. So this shows us the importance of, of uh, the manzil, the status of the parents, and that that is a part of good adab and manners. Mm -hmm. And the way you relate to them is a part of adab and manners. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala coupled that along with Tawheed. He mentioned Tawheed, the worship of him and him alone, which is the greatest. Tawheed. The greatest thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded with is Tawheed. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded, along with Tawheed, that a person is righteous with parents. And that's a part of edib. That's a part of etiquettes. Likewise, going back to the hadith, that there isn't a thing that weighs heavier on the scale of the believer than good manners. That lets us know then after Tawheed, of course, you know, after uh, the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, as is mentioned in this hadith, that's one of the heaviest things because that is all encompassing. And that goes back to the title of this chapter, the comprehensive chapter, Kitab uh, al you know, that this is a comprehensive chapter of studying manners. And this falls under manners. Husn al khuk, righteous, uh, righteous uh, manners, righteous conduct righteous etiquette, uh, etiquettes. All of this is a part of those great deeds that are that weigh heavy on the scale of, believer, of the believer. So this shows that this is a part of the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and it is 
a part of the methodology of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah that having righteous conduct, we should be the best in manners, we should be the most merciful with creation. As Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah mentioned, that Ahlul Sunnah arhaman nas bin nas or arhaman nas bil khulq. That Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah are the most merciful ones, you know, the most merciful people to the creation. They're the most mer merciful with animals. They're the most merciful with uh, other human beings. And even with the jinn. Why? Because they are following what has been ordained and commanded by their Lord. They are actualizing the practice. مَا مِنْ شَيْءٍ أَثْقُلُ فِي مَيْزَانَ مُؤْمِنْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ مِنْ حُسْنُ الْخُلْقِ that there isn't a thing that weighs heavier on the scale of believers, of the believers, than righteous manners. Uh, and that shows us, that affirms for us what? That Yom al Qiyamah exists. And that is a day we will be called to account for our deeds. And from those deeds is what? Husn al Khulq, good manners. And all throughout the Quran and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam were commanded to have righteous manners, we're commanded to have good adab, we're commanded to be gentle, that this is the asl, the origin of the believers, that they're gentle with the creation, not harsh and stern, and, and uh, you know, uh, aggressive with the creation, but rather we should be illustrating those beautiful manners that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us with. That if you want people to accept your da'wah, you do it with gentleness. All of this falls under husn al-khulq, good manners. All of this falls under this uh, kitab, kitab al jami and the etiquettes of the believer. And in that same hadith that we mentioned, then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa mentioned the wicked adab, the adab that we want to stay away from. He said, well, And verily Allah hates wicked and sinful speech, letting us know what? That wicked speech like backbiting, slander, namima, uh, harsh speech to people. All of this is from those things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hates. And when you curse people, you slander people, you, uh, you know, you don't, you ha have no adab. Even there's adab in ikhtilaf, in the way you differ with someone. There's manners. We don't throw manners out the window. We don't say, no, now you've went against me. I'm going to curse you. I'm going to speak about your lineage. I'm going to speak about your family. I'm going to speak about, no. But rather, you still maintain adab and akhlaq. So it shows us the importance of this great uh, uh, bab in Islam, this great uh, chapter in uh, fiqh and chapter in raqa'iq, in uh, uh, heart, you know, is issues of the heart. And that's why you see so many mu'alafat, so many books of the Salaf al Look at Imam Nawawi's uh, book, Al Athkar, and Riyadh al Salihin and Arba'in Anawi, all of these books, they entail a hadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, ayat and hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam talking about manners, talking about mu'amalat, how we deal with one another. So it shows us the importance. And from some of those great uh, important manners that we should observe, and we should be observing, especially in the holy month of Ramadan, is the manners of reciting the Quran. And in regards to this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitab al kareem Inna nahnu nazalna dhikr Wa inna lahu lahafidun Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitab al kareem Verily we, it is, or verily, it is we who have set down the dhikr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descended the Quran. And surely we will guard it. It's guarded from corruption. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitab al-kareem, Do they not consider the Qur'an carefully? 
Had it been from other than Allah, they would surely have found therein much contradictions. That shows the importance of the Qur'an, the importance of reciting the Qur'an. And as we mentioned from the Salaf al Salih, uh, and uh, at the Rasa al uh, you know, at the head of them is the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum is that they read the Qur'an and they contemplated the Qur'an and they made dhikr of the Qur'an. And they would not just memorize the Qur'an like we do, like we teach our children to memorize, uh, you know, the Qur'an for those that even give that importance. They put them in tahfid, the Qur'an, to memorize, but they don't teach them adab and manners. And they don't teach them to practice the Qur'an. And that's where they're going to get that adab. And that's why the khulq of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the Qur'an. His manners was the Qur'an. And this is the point of mentioning the adab with the Qur'an and the implementation of the Qur'an is a part of that adab. All of that is included in those, <coughs> those, those good deeds of the believer and included in adab. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitab al kareem and recite the Qur'an in a slow, uh, a slow style. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that there's an adab, there's a way in which we recite the Qur'an even. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, No people gather in a house from Allah's houses to recite Allah's book and study it together, except that a sakina, serenity, uh, descends upon them and mercy envelops them or encompasses them and the angels surround them and Allah mentions them to those that are with him. So do you want to be mentioned in a gathering that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has with the angels? Alayhim salatu wa salam. Do you want to have serenity and mercy descending upon you? then that comes from reciting the Book of Allah. It comes from studying the Qur'an. It, studies, it comes from being in the majalis of dhikr. That means the majalis of talib al-ilm. And just the fact that you're listening to this video and doing some type of talib al-ilm, especially when you're in the houses of Allah, in the masjid, then that's a, a, a sign of goodness. But when you're in the gatherings of dhikr, in the masajid, the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as the Prophet والسلام, mentioned in this hadith, then you, you gain the malaika are in that gathering. And serenity are in that gathering. And anyone who's done talab al-ilm with the scholars, then you will you know uh, the uh, the reality of this hadith. You, you've had a chance to experience that if you were gaining some benefit from those gatherings, those gatherings of dhikr, if you went there to seek knowledge, to, to remove the jahil from yourself, to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to benefit from ahl al-ilm, ahl al-dhikr, ahl al-khair, if you went for that purpose, then you know what, what, what this hadith is, is talking about. And all of that is from, the, majah, from the, the manners of dhikr. And it's from the manners of sitting with the ulama. And it's from the manners of being with Ahl khair And it's from the manners of Talab al ilm And it's from the manners of seeking knowledge. And the Prophet alayhi, alayhi salatu wasalam, said, خَيْرَكُمْ مَنْ تَعَلَّمَ الْقُرْآنَ وَعَلَّمَهُ The best amongst you is those who learn the Qur'an and teach it. Ahabati fillah we can't underestimate the superiority of those who memorize the Qur'an and implement it and teach it. And we can't underestimate the benefit and the beauty of Talib al-Ilm in sharing that knowledge for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Ajr, we don't know the Ajr that you're going to... The Ajr is Azim. And a part of seeking knowledge that some of the Salaf or many of the Salaf, they began, this was the menhaj of the Salaf, is they began with manners. But we begin with books. We begin with sitting and we're not, we don't even know how to sit. We don't even know how to sit at the feet of the scholars 
and benefit. Instead, we're looking to see who we can belittle in the in the, the majalis al ilm in the majalis al dhikr. We're looking to see how we can backbite, how we can make riba, how we can post it on the internet, how can we get involved in this and that and controversy instead of going for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to remove some of the sins, to remove the ignorance from ourselves, and to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and learn from the adab of the ulama. So all of that comes under this chapter of adab and manners. On another occasion, the Messenger of Allah والسلام, said, the person who is proficient in the Qur'an is with the uh, safara, the messengers uh, or, the, uh, or the angels. The kiram, those who are close to Allah, and the barara, those who are obedient to Allah, Azza wa Jal. As for the person who, re who reads the Qur'an, though it is difficult for him, and though he stutters, he has two rewards. So that's good, glad tidings for us, those of us who are not uh, well-versed in the Arabic language. And who are not Arabs, who, that's not our mother tongue, who have difficulty reciting. But we still strive, we still seek to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and memorize his book and benefit. That's glad tidings. And all of that falls under the edit of the Qur'an. So from some of the edit and manners of reciting the Qur'an is to strive to be sincere when you learn the Qur'an and strive to apply its teachings as the Salaf used to do. And that was the minhaj of the Sahaba. And they even had a certain type of manners, uh, manners in the way in which they recite, recited the Quran, and that they were consistent, and that they didn't lay, uh, you know, on their sides. That they were, they had an edit, even with uh, the way in which they, uh, 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 the way they recited and and read the Quran. All of those are from the manners. And from some of the other important manners we should observe, a habitifillah, for example, the manners of giving and greet, uh, giving salams. And those are some of the ahadith that we'll study also in this chapter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in Kitab al Karim, O oh, you who believe, enter not houses other than your own until you have asked permission and greeted those in them. And what is that from? That's from adab. That's from manners. That's from etiquette that we must follow. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitab al -kareem, But when you enter the houses, greet one another with a greeting from Allah, meaning as salamu alaykum, and blessed and good. So this shows us again the manners, the adab, how we relate to one another. So it shows us how uh, that the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what he intended for us. He intended for us to have righteous manners and to actualize those manners. Greet one another. That is from ibadah. That is from Islam. That is from how we relate to one another. That is a part of ta'awan ala bitter wa taqwa. That's a part of, 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 of cooperating in righteousness and God-fearfulness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says for Kitab al-Kareem, and when you are greeted with a greeting, greet in return with what is better than it, or at least return it equally. So here we learn that if someone gives you salam, assalamu alaikum, say assalamu alaikum back at least, or assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, or assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, or some of the other various ways that there is to spread salams. The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, Allah created Adam whose length was 60 arm spans. And then Allah said, go and give greetings of peace to those angels and listen to what they greet you with. It is your greeting and the greeting of your progeny. Then Adam alayhi salatu wasalam said to the angels, peace be upon you. And they said, peace and the mercy of Allah upon you. 
And they added, and the mercy of Allah. And the Messenger of Allah, alayhi salatu wasalam, said, You will not enter paradise until you believe. And you will not believe until you love one another. Shall I not guide you to something which, if you do it, will make you love one another? Spread greetings of peace amongst yourselves. All of that is from edit. All of that is from etiquette. The etiquette of what? The etiquette of salam. That we greet one another. This is the haq of a believer. How many times do we find ourselves in situations and believers don't greet one another? And that they're careless in greeting and returning the salams back. Some people refuse to return the salam back over some worldly thing. We're not talking about in the mishroor places of when it's legislated not to return salams. For example, as a type of punishment for people of bidah or a type of punishment for the people of, of Ma'asi to help bring them back. Even that, that's a part of edab and, and, and manners to bring them back to where they went astray, to where they made a mistake. And if there's no maslaha in that, if there's no benefit in that, then you avoid that. You avoid cutting off the salams and cutting them off and turning your backs. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said the rights of a Muslim upon another Muslim are six. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was then asked, and what are they, O Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if you meet a Muslim, then extend to him greetings of peace. That's one of them. Again, adab, manners, how we deal with one another. And the scholars, they mention that the sunnah to initiate greetings of peace, to give salams to someone, that it's obligatory. You know, that, or that it's sunnah to greet and that it's obligatory to, uh, to return the salams. So if someone gives you salams, be vigilant in returning those salams. And you can see that the salams, it brings light to the heart and it makes the, the heart softer. This was the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, alayhi salatu was salam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam actualized the Qur'an. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kitab al -Kareem, When you are greeted with a greeting, greet in return with what is better than it, or at least return it equally. So this lets us know how we're supposed to practice that, how we're supposed to implement that. And the great imams of the sunnah, the imams of the sunnah, uh, they... Uh, mentioned that there's consensus on this. Ibn Hazm, Ibn Abdul Barr, uh, Sheikh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah, they each have said that there is a consensus among the scholars in this issue that it's compulsory to return greetings of, pe uh, of peace. So that it, it's, it's, it's an obligation to give the salams back. We should not be of those people who are greedy with our salams. All of this falls under the adab and how we deal with one another. So it's very important that the believer actualizes uh, these important adab, these important ways of manners and how we relate to one another and greeting one another. And from the etiquettes that we learn and from the manners that we should actualize, is, for example, even manners, this is inclusive of the etiquettes for seeking permission to enter into home, enter into someone's home or onto their property. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in Kitab al -Kareem, O you who believe, enter not houses other than your own until you have asked permission. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded you. He's commanded who? Who did he address in this ayat? He said, Ya yuladina amanu, O you who believe. So these manners are for the manners for the mu'minin, for ahli iman, for the believers, those who are supposed to set that standard, that exemplary standard for the rest of creation. That before we enter into the homes of people, we should ask permission. We should never just barge into someone's house, barge into someone's room, barge into someone's dwelling. 
but rather if we want to follow what Allah has commanded us with. And whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us with something, the asl is, the origin of that command, al-amr yufid al-wujub, that a, a command is that it is an obligation to, to implement. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kitab al Kareem, O you who believe, let your legal slaves and slave girls and those amongst you who have not come to the age of puberty ask your permission but, you know, before they come, uh, before they address you, before they come into the room and address you and, and so forth. So this shows us, Sahabatifillah, again, these are a part of the etiquette and part of the, the manners of Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al Kareem, and when the children among you come to puberty, let them ask for permission. This shows us the adab, the etiquettes of the of the children in relation to their elders, in relation to their parents. The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, seeking permission to enter another person's private place has been made compulsory only because of eyesight. People do not see that which is unlawful for them to see. And this is in Bukhari and Muslim. Look at this edit. Look at this, uh, these manners. How many people have you known? I mean, I, I've seen this personally where people, they come into people's, for example, even to a people, uh, a person's maktab at their library. They go and they look to see the books. Not because they're curious because they like the books, because they want to report back to their companions and often companions in evil on what they found in so-and-so's book collection. It's even to that extent that you find this among students. People are supposed to be students of, students of, of, uh, of knowledge, that they come make teftish, they go and search through the books of the people in order to report back, in order to refute them, in order to... And where is the Islamic manners in that? Where is the edib from that? And from the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam is to greet first and then ask permission to enter. That's also from edib, from manners. That you say, the Prophet wasallam uh, mentioned there was a man who, who entered a room without having greeting, greeted the people. So the Prophet والسلام, said, Irja, Fakul Salamu Alaikum. The Prophet والسلام, commanded this man, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, Go back and say Assalamu Alaikum. The Prophet والسلام, commanded in this. That shows us the importance of the simple adab and etiquettes of giving salams. That's something we can't take lightly. In another narration, Rabi ibn Amr radiallahu ta'ala anhu related that a man from Bani Amr asked permission to enter the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam's house. Saying, may I enter? The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said to his servant, go out to this one and teach him how to ask permission. Say to him, say, assalamu alaikum, may I enter? Look at that. That's manners. That's edim. That's manners. That's the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa We can't ignore manners. That goes back to the hadith we mentioned. There isn't a thing that weighs heavier on the scale of the believer than good manners. We've got to implement that. We've got to remind ourselves. It's a reminder for myself and a reminder for my brothers and sisters to be vigilant in spreading the salams. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, As-salamu alaykum. Uh, you know, when asked about how to give salams, he said, As-salamu alaykum upon the Messenger of Allah. As-salamu alaykum. May Umar enter. This is adab. This is manners. This is the higher standard of morality that we should uh, look to. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, and this is in regards to those people who go and look through people's belongings or come into people's houses without permission to look and spy. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, when one looks inside of the home of a people without their permission, it becomes permissible for them to gouge out his eye. 
That's what the Messenger of Allah said. In another narration, Abu Huraira reported that the Messenger of Allah said, Were a man to look at you in your house or your private uh, property without your permission, and were you then to pelt him with a pebble and knock out his eye, there would be no sin upon you. This is from the speech of the Messenger of Allah showing us the importance of the manners and etiquettes of entering one's home and the manners and etiquettes and to stay away from those traits and manners and etiquettes that are mithmoon, that are sinful, which is spying and uh, uh, you know, examining people's things for a uh, wicked, with a wicked intention. All of that goes against the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah. Alayhi salatu wa salam. And from those excellent manners, as illustrated by the Messenger of Allah, alayhi salatu wa salam, and those excellent forms of etiquette that we have to have as a believer, and why it is so important for us to study Adab and why the Musan, why those uh, great ulama of the past, how, why they wrote those books about etiquette. As we see, there are so many things that we do which go against the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So many mistakes because we don't know. The only way you're going to get that knowledge is by ta is by uh, ta'lim, is, is by ta'lim, is, is by by studying. Darasa that you have to study. You have to study the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, seeking ilm and naf nafia. The Prophet ﷺ said, Man khayran Whenever Allah wants good for a person, He gives them understanding of the religion. How are you going to gain fiqh fi deen? Is it going to descend on you like wahi and revelation? No. It comes from talib al ilm. It comes from searching out knowledge with a correct intention to come closer to Allah, to, 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 to lift off the ignorance from yourself, to share with others. And to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Talib al am Talib al Jannah. Seeking knowledge is seeking Jannah. The Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam said, Man salaka tariqin yal talmasuhu bihi ilmin sahal Allahu lahu tariqin al Jannah. Whoever traverses the path of knowledge, and Allah will make easy for him the path of paradise. Because knowledge, ilm al nafi, is, is, is ilm al shar, is ilm of, how, of these etiquettes, of these manners. It's knowledge of how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how to relate to one another for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how to greet one another, how to interact with one another. All of this is a part of etiquette. All of this is a part of uh, uh, ibadah. All of this is a part of ilm al nafia And all of this is uh, the sabil of the mu'mineen for them to gain paradise. Is this etiquette? We have to know this. From some of the other etiquettes of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the etiquettes of meeting another Muslim. And this goes back to the greetings we talked about. But also when you meet someone, how do you, what is a part of those greetings? What are some of the things that are important? The Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasallam said, shake hands with one another. Any hatred that exists among you will go away. Give gifts to one another. You will end up loving one another. And enmity that exists amongst you will go away. When you shake someone's hand, Unless you have severe hatred and nifaq, even that, just for you, that's a difficult thing. But by grabbing their hand, this often melts away just a little bit of that. It melts away a little bit. Unless you have a severe, you're a severe racist, or a severe person of hatred, or a severe ta'asa, blind partisan. Then by greeting their hands, or you're a hypocrite. You know, if you have those traits, then yeah, it perhaps it will be, even then, it, as the Messenger of Allah said, shake hands with one another. Any hatred that exists will go away and you will end up loving one another. And, and, and loving one another and any enmity will go away. So this shows us that this will lighten that those burdens that you have between one another. Why even the sunnah of mankind you see that they, what do they do? They make greetings. They greet one another by shaking hands. They forge agreements by shaking hands. And that's the etiquette and adab of Islam. And that will help the believers soften their hearts one towards another. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, No two Muslims meet and shake hands with one another except that they are forgiven their sins before they part from one another. Look at this. Hadafi dunya, 
والآخرة ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقينا ذاب النار Oh Allah bless us with good in this life and good in the hereafter and, 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 and protect us from the hellfire Shield us from the hellfire Ya Rabbil Alameen And how do we do that? The Prophet ﷺ said No two Muslims meet and shake hands with one another except that they are forgiven That's an expiation of your sins If nothing else you expiate your sins and you also gain the benefit of lightening your heart a bit towards that person. You also may begin to love that person. How many times, especially living in, not just living in the land of the Muslims, but especially here, you greet a person strictly for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Especially as men, we see other uh, brothers. You, you just happen to see an individual. You just love him for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You always see him go to the masjid. You in your neighborhood, maybe in your building, are the only two who pray maybe in the masjid. So you love him strictly for that sake. And sometimes you end up running into him and you shake hands for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that increases the love between you. And there's expiation as the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. So that shows us it goes heavy on the scale of the believers. Good deeds. It expiates sins. It raises your status with one another and raises your status, more importantly, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of that is from adab. All of that is from manners and etiquettes. This is the adab of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. According to the hadith uh, of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the hadith of Anas radiallahu ta'ala, he said, when the people of Yemen came, the Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam said, the people of Yemen are approaching. And they have softer hearts than you. Anas radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, and they are the first who came with handshaking. Al-Bara al uh, ibn Azib radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, one of the manners that makes a greeting complete is that it's for you to shake your brother's hand. All of this is from the etiquettes. And look at how we just learned. As Anas ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, that the people of Yemen, that they were the first ones to come with the handshaking in that, perhaps in the Arab Peninsula. That's from Ahl Yemen. And how many ahadith mention that Ahl Yemen, Al Iman Yemani, wa Hikma Yemeniya, that Iman is Yemeni and wisdom is Yemeni. Ahl Yemen have something to offer, and they had something to offer. The companions, radiallahu ta'ala, anhu majma'in. And from that was the adab of shaking hands and softening the hearts. That is from adab. That is what we have to practice, ahabat tefillah. And, and from the forbidden adab, forbidden manners, is to shake the hands of, uh, uh, of, of women, meaning that a man who is not permissible to shake, shake a woman's hand uh, who is lawful for him to marry, then this is impermissible. That she fits under those lawful categories. The Prophet wasallam said, Verily I do not shake hands with women. What I say to a hundred women is tantamount to what I say to one woman. Meaning that him saying, Salaamu Alaikum. Ibn Abdul Bar said, The Prophet wasallam saying, Verily I do not shake hands with women, proves that it is not permissible for a man to make any physical contact with a woman who is a stranger to him. He may not touch her with his hand, and he may not shake hands with her. So that shows us, Ahabatifillah, that is from the adab, the etiquettes of greetings. That yes, you can give salams by Assalamu Alaikum, but greetings and shaking hands, no. That is from what Islam teaches us. That is from the edad and the etiquettes that we have to learn as believers in practice. That is from the, ed, uh, the etiquettes of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Among some of the other important edad and etiquettes that we have to learn, and may Allah forgive us of our many shortcomings of not practicing this when we have the opportunity. And from some of those etiquettes and manners that are superior, that that come from the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are the etiquettes of visiting one's brother, visiting your, your sick brother and just visiting one another. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fikit Abel Kareem, O you who believe, let your legal slaves and slave girls and those amongst you who have not come to the age of puberty ask your permission before they enter uh, on three 
uh, on three occasions before Fajr prayer and while you put off your clothes for the noonday rest and after the Isha. Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala reported that the Prophet والسلام, said a man once visited a brother of his in another village and Allah Azawajal appointed an angel to lie in wait for him on the road he was taking. When the man came upon the angel, the latter said, where do you wish to go? The man said, I want to visit a brother of mine in this valley. The angel asked, do you have some blessing or favor upon him for which you are, uh, you know, basically some worldly gain? He said, no, except that I do intend, I do indeed love him for Allah. Azawajal. The angel said, I am indeed a messenger of Allah sent to you to inform you that Allah indeed loves you as you have loved your brother for him. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Look at this, Ahabatifillah. That when you love someone for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you love them strictly for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no worldly gain. Allah will love you. Allah will love you. And what love is more superior and more meaningful and that we are more in need of than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's love? We need Allah and we need His love. May Allah love us, I mean, may Allah love us and bless us to be of those who love one another for His sake. How many ahadith mention this important fact? And this is a right, and this is a, this is a part of the uh, uh, adab and manners of, uh, of how the believers are to be with one another. And that's why those manners are superior. Even there's a manner on visiting your brother that the one that leads the prayer should be the one, the head of the, the one who's the head of the household, whose house you are visiting. The Prophet والسلام, said, "The one should lead the people in prayer is the one who knows more of Allah's book. If they are equal in recitation, then the one who is most knowledgeable regarding the Sunnah. If they are equal in the knowledge of the Sunnah, then the one who migrated earlier. And if they are equal in regards to their migration, then the one who is older. And a man should not lead another man in his place, his place of authority, nor should he sit in his house." on his particular mattress unless he obtains his permission. And in another narration, unless he gives permission to you. Look at that. That's from the adab of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That is what Islam encourages us to do and encourages how for, for us how to be. Also from the manners and etiquettes of Islam, is, as is mentioned in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the host and the guests, it shows us how important ikram al dayf you know, the Prophet sallallahu told us to be generous to your guests, invite guests over, be generous to them. And this is a reminder, and especially during the holy month of Ramadan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says for Kitab al Kareem, has a story reached you of the honored guests along with another of Ibrahim when they came into him and said, Salam. He answered, Salam, uh, and he said, You are a people unknown to me. Then he turned to his household, so brought out a roasted calf and brought out a roasted calf, and Ibrahim was uh and placed it before them saying, will you not eat? Look at that, that's the adab that's, that we learn from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That was the adab of our father Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam. That is the adab that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has taught us, has urged us, has encouraged us. The Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wa sallam said, مَنْ كَانَ يُؤْمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرُ فَلَا يَرَدْ جَارَهُ وَمَنْ كَانَ يُؤْمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرُ فَلْيُقْرِمْ ضَيْفُهُ وَمَنْ كَانَ يُؤْمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرُ فَيُقُلْ خَيْرُ وَلْيَسْمَطْ 
look at those. All of that is from Adab. All of that from, is from prophetic manners that we need to actualize. And we can only get that through ilm. The Prophet والسلام, said, whoever believes in Allah on the last day, that affirms for us, oh, uh, that's Iman Billah. And Iman be Yomul Tiyama, Yomul Akhir. He said, whoever believes in Allah in the last day, then let him not harm his neighbor. Whosoever believes in Allah in the last day, then let him honor his guests. Whoever believes in Allah in the last day, then let him speak well or remain silent. Look at that Adab. That's all from Adab and Akhlaq and manners. But we don't learn that. Unfortunately, we don't practice that. We know that. We don't practice. We're eager to speak. We're eager to trample on the rights of others. We're eager to disrespect our guests or not even have guests at all. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us of our many sins. The Prophet ﷺ said, The Muslim has five rights upon another Muslim. Answering a salam, visiting the sick, following the funeral pr pr procession, answering an invitation, and saying, Yarhamakallah to the one who sneezes. Adab, akhlaq, manners, adab, and the etiquettes. That's the etiquettes and the manners of how a believer should be with one another. Returning the salams, uh, visiting the sick, following the funerals, and accepting invitations, and returning, saying, Yarhamakallah, when one sneezes, if they say, Alhamdulillah. You say, Yarhamukullah. There are so many adab that the Muslim has to learn and that they are from the superiority of Islam and they are from the excellent manners and they are from this, those things which will be heavy on your scale because those are the things which are heavy on the scale of the believer and from some of the other important gatherings uh, 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 etiquettes for the believer to to implement and follow is the etiquettes of a gathering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al Kareem, O you who believe, when you are told to make room in the assemblies, spread out and make room. Allah will give you ample room. And when you are told to rise up for prayers or jihad or for any other good deed, rise up. Allah will exalt in decree, in degree those of you who believe and those who have been granted knowledge. And Allah is well acquainted with what you do. That's from the adab. The adab of an assembly, of a gathering. The khutbah to Jumu'ah. Why does the imam, the imam tries to inculcate this adab by saying, move forward, brothers. Allow the other believers space to come in the masjid. Especially when you have rain and snow and heat and people are outside. That's from adab. That's from manners. The Prophet ﷺ said, No people stand up from a gathering in which they did not remember Allah except that they stand up like from a donkey, donkey carcass. No people stand up from a gathering in which they did not remember Allah except that they stand up like from a donkey car carcass. You know, a, a, a gathering that had no, had no benefit but instead it left you with stench. You don't want your majalis to be like this. You have to remember Allah. That is from etiquettes and manners and the ahkam. And that's from that bab that we're going to study in this chapter of Kitab al Jamir, the comprehensive bab full of those beautiful ahadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on how the believer should interact with how they should interact with one another and in fact with mankind and we ask Allah the Almighty by his divine names and attributes to grant us forgiveness grant us mercy grant us practice bless us with 
And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us of any things that we said that were incorrect. And anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jal. Anything that I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.